Hey guys, today we are going to talk about seven magic cards that have gone up in price. We will start with Wheel of Fate from Commander 2016. This card went from 99 cents to $12.25 today. So it's at a all time high. It's a card that has seen a small spike almost to $4 before, and now it has increased even more. One of the reasons the Commander Edition typically spikes before is due to the fact that there's not that many of them out there compared to, in this case, even an old block like Time Spiral. The Time Spiral Edition can still be purchased for $5. When you look at Suspend, it is one of the most powerful mechanics. It feels a lot like Phyrexian Mana, and we all know Phyrexian Mana cards get banned quite a bit. Uh, Mental Misstep, and then more recently, Gataxian Probe. So when you talk about a suspend card, there are three ones that are very good. Ancestral Visions in blue, Restore Balance has, is now a 10 plus dollar card, and then Wheel of Fate. And when two of them go up, they want to bring up the other one. Living End is also quite good. Um, however, Hypergenesis is banned. It's so good, I guess, it's banned in, um, it's actually banned in Modern still. It's one of the first cards that got banned. So good, powerful mechanic. Suspend cards are just good investments overall. Flash, uh, this card is now $4. The Mar Mirage version is a little bit more. It's a $5. Uh, at the all-time low, it was $1.64 uh, before going up, essentially doubling, let's say, 250% increase in price. Now, why would this card go up with the unbanning of the Hulk, the Protein Hulk? Now you can get the Flash Hulk combo. I believe it is okay in EDH to do. I don't feel like Flash was ever banned in EDH. It was just that they banned the Hulk. And that is an instant win unless an opponent stops you because you can search out any number of... I'm sure you can search out combo pieces which will allow you to win the game at that stage, maybe like a Malera, a Seer, and then a Kitchen Finks. I don't know. Something like that would probably work. So Flash, it's an obvious pick. So when Hulk gets unbanned and it goes up to $25, you can't pick up the Hulks because you're either going to get canceled orders or there's by the time you go log online and you check out, there's none left. So the next best card would be Flash. And Flash is so obvious that once Hulk got unbanned, that this card would go up. It's not really a mystery why. They're, they go well together, and it used to be a very good deck. Next, we have Condemn. Condemn in general, let me talk about Condemn in general. It has been reprinted several times, and this is the most expensive copy. Being, I personally do not like this artwork, but there's not that many copies of it. It is the Magic Player's Reward. Uh, with the full art, so one in a condemn. It's very good against Death Shadow because you actually kill multiple Death Shadows. There's nothing better than condemning a Death Shadow, and then the opponent gains life, and the life gain kills the other Death Shadow. So you would much rather have your opponents gain life because your opponent is act actively trying to lose life than not. So condemn is a very good card. And it is an answer to the tier one deck right now. And as a, there will always be a tier one deck. That's true in standard. That's true in modern. There's, that's true in legacy. That's true in vintage. There will always be tier one decks. And the tier one decks will always be better than the non tier one decks. So therefore, the non tier one decks have to play stuff like Condemn to counteract it. In a typical meta, Condemn would not be played. But because it can remove Death Shadow, in many cases, it's even better than Path to Exile. Path to Exile is very good, but you cannot remove two sh Death Shadows with Path. Condemn, you can kill two. Sometimes. So we see the most expensive version getting a tiny bit more expensive. And here's one I really want to point out, the power of casual play. To my knowledge, it's never been reprinted before. So there's a lot of casual play cards ED8s and then casual casual. I'm talking about kitchen table, no sleeves, casual. 
This is one of them. I have loved this card for the longest time. It has a uh, beautiful artwork, Siste, Hannah, and then the Makati mask person. Soof saying. So what does that do? It is the uncommon. It's one blue, free and double blue. Shuffle your library X, and the X is really important. Look at the top X cards of your library, and then put them back in any order. Now some people might say miracles it needs this card because it doesn't have top this is not top okay this is not top this is way more mana intensive if you really want to get any type of results but it will allow you to play miracles and in the edh realm a blue just to be able to manipulate your deck is always very good especially if you're a combo and you have a hundred card deck and mana generation is not an issue then this card I mean, one of the bad things about the card is so mana intensive, but in EDH, it's not an issue. You can play the X anytime. You can play it on your opponent's turn, on your turn. You can play it on your opponent's turn and then just draw whatever you need the next turn. And that's typically how I play it. The five mana ability is interesting, but I don't think it's something that I would normally play. Now, Crumbling Ashes is something I want to talk about as a block. We have seen this card before. I've talked about it. It's not. It's pretty obvious why it's going up in price with all the minus one, minus one counters. However, Eve, Eve Tide, Eve Tide is a older set, and you can still find bulk. But maybe you find this. Maybe you don't. What I'm interested to tell you is Eve Tide had a ton of these minus one, minus one counter effects. So there's a lot of other cards to look at. And they haven't spiked yet because the minus one, minus one counters, in my opinion, is not as strong as it could be. But sure, the Hour of Devastation, and I don't see any reason that they wouldn't continue on with it, have minus one, minus one counters being a theme, then you are looking at more cards in Evening Tide or Eve Tide. I call it evening tide because it's a morning tide. Anyway, if you can find bulk of these older sets, you would do well. Because I cannot tell you what's going to go up in price, but I can tell you uh, if we get another set or even just with the cards today from casual, minus one, minus one counters do matter a lot more today than they did before Amaket. And because of that, there will be cards that are more expensive. Now we get to a card that I have trouble understanding. This is a very good card. Gideon is very good, but he has just gone up, up, up in price. I do not know if he's seen more modern play. I don't believe so, but um, it might just be he's on theme. Yes, he does get a power boost from the other Gideon emblem, the one double white Gideon that produces the emblem where you cannot lose the game and he is in my opinion and modern playability at least the stronger of the Gideons he does cost one more but he's much harder to destroy with his six loyalty and then his plus and his minus are very very good for protecting him he is hard to destroy and if you have board wrath really difficult to take out with creatures so when you talk about Gideon, that might be the reason he has gone up since Amaket is people are playing him maybe casually with the other Gideon emblem. He obviously, like any other Gideon, goes well with that emblem where you cannot lose the game as long as you control Gideon. It doesn't matter which Gideon. So that's one of the reasons this card has gone up in price. Definitely one to take out of your trade binders. He's pretty much essentially doubled in price and that's something that you like to see in your planeswalkers planeswalkers at five dollars used to be four dollars and 49 cents at some point in their life they are not going to be five dollars anymore and that has been shown for gideon now last card i want to talk about when you have a tier one deck what happens is a lot of friends playable cards now become playable or at least become you can experiment with them so at all time low, this was a 61 cents card. As you can see from the graph, it was below a dollar until very, very recently. And now it plunged into darkness from fifth dawn with no reprint is a $5 card. You lose a life, which previously was a negative effect. And 
but now it's okay, in a okay effect. So choose one, sacrifice any number of creatures, then you gain free life for each sacrifice permanent, or pay X life, then look at the top X cards of your library, put any of those cards in your hand, and then remaining on, remove from the rest of the game. So you can entwine it. It used to be the life game was kind of useful. Here, you're just gonna pay the life, draw your death shadow, and then play your death shadow and it already becomes a huge creature because you lost substantial life. Uh, very good in the tier one death shadow deck. So cards that were not good or fringe playable before become experimental and then they spike in price. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Let me know if you own any of these cards and what cards I should do next. Bye guys.